Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Secret Files Tunguska. So, we finished up at Oleg's house, we abused that poor kitten for our nefarious plot, and now we should be able to travel to the museum. Max Gruber said he'd be back at the museum sometime this evening. I should use the time to get some shut-eye. If my feminine intuition doesn't fail me, I could regret it if I don't. through everything but haven't found anything. And Kalinkov? Still nothing here either. We'll probably have to take other options into consideration. I don't care what you do, as long as I get results. Don't disappoint me. Strange. I feel like I'm always being followed. Even when I came home earlier, for a brief moment, I thought that I saw the face of that Konsky guy in the window. Oh well, most likely it's my nerves. I hope Max heard something from my father. Alright, so our bad guys are in a comically evil skyscraper overlooking the city. And they apparently have psychokinetic powers, as if the introduction wasn't enough for that. Let's hope we don't have to take him head on, but talk to Max Gruber, see what he knows. Hello? Can I interrupt for a moment? You're not interrupting, on the contrary. Have you heard from your father? No, unfortunately not. And last night I was attacked. Attacked? Are you hurt? No, nothing to worry about. But it must be because of something important. Do you really have no idea what it could be? No, I... He's been under a lot of stress in the last few days, but that's happened before. Looking back, there are plenty of ways to interpret it, but... Especially conspicuous? No, not really. That's a shame. Yesterday evening, you offered me your help. Does the offer still stand? But of course. My name is Max, by the way. Nina. But you know that, don't you? So, ask away. Alright, so first let's see what he knows about that Oleg guy. Does the name Oleg Kamburski say anything to you? Kamburski? Oleg Kamburski? No, nothing. Should it? Unfortunately, I don't exactly know that either. Alright, what about this diadem? I found this piece of paper amongst my father's records. Does it tell you anything? LA-60-AK-19-AL? That sounds like one of our exhibits. What about it? No idea. I was hoping... that you could tell me that. Not spontaneously, but I can go and get the item. Oh, how convenient. Right there. The note with the description of the diadem is missing, but you just had it in your hand. I don't know any more about it either. Thanks a lot. Can I take my time to have a look at it? Of course, but please don't forget to put it back later. Otherwise your father will tear my head off. If he still can. Hey, stop thinking like that. We'll find him, I promise. Yes, hopefully. There must be an important reason why Daddy kept a piece of paper with the description of the diadem at home. But what? And what is that about the true princess? He used to call me that sometimes. Is it a message to me that I should be able to understand somehow? Think, Nina. Think quickly. Right, uh, has Eddie turned up again yet? Yesterday evening, Eddie was mumbling something about people in black robes. I didn't take him very seriously at first, because his description was, let's say a little strange. But I spoke to a little girl today who saw something similar last night. She even took a photo of the men in black robes. Unfortunately, there is not very much to see, but I'll certainly speak to Eddie about it again. Do you know where I can find him? No, I have no idea. I haven't seen him all day. He's probably crept away somewhere quiet to think about it all. You mean he's drinking again? Yes, I'm afraid so. Unless... Unless what? Oh, nothing. Nothing? Come on out with it, tell me! Well, if those strange men in black noticed that he was watching them... You mean they came back? I don't know. At the moment, I have no idea what is actually happening here. Well, this is something we have in common. I feel like they recorded like half of their lines in like one studio or with one piece of equipment and then recorded the other half in 
another studio or with a different piece of equipment because it seems like they get really echoey randomly. Like one line will be fine and the other line will be echoey. In the last few hours, I've heard the name Tunguska several times. Do you know anything about it? Do you mean that Tunguska catastrophe from 1908? Ah, uh, yes, could be. At the beginning of the last century, something exploded there. The destruction must have been enormous, but even today, nobody really knows what happened back then. Your father once took part in an expedition to Tunguska, but you probably know that, don't you? We never really spoke much about what he used to do. After my mother's death, he never wanted to speak about his work in Russia anymore. Oh, I didn't know. I'm sorry. That's okay. It was a long time ago. She was killed in a traffic accident. Shortly after that, we came to Germany. I think my father simply wanted to leave all of that behind him. And your father never spoke about his work in Russia? Didn't you ever ask him? No. He asked me never to ask him again. And I kept my word, despite being very interested at times. Well, I know a little more about it. In 1908, an unidentified object went down over the Siberian taiga. A huge area was completely destroyed by the shockwave and a wall of fire. The shepherds who lived there, the so-called Evenk, were either hurled through the air or burnt. There were hardly any survivors to witness anything. Several expeditions were started to find out the cause of this catastrophe, but despite all their efforts, no clues or any evidence was found that was at all helpful. And in time, several fantastic theories arose, from a meteorite colliding with Earth, to the appearance of an unknown type of energy, to the explosion of a spaceship. And off the top of my head, that is about everything that I can tell you on the subject. But somewhere in the archive, I still have a few articles over the Tunguska phenomenon lying around. Shall I go and get them? Yes, that would be sweet of you. Oleg spoke about it, and I read one of my father's mails to him. There was also something about it in there. Maybe it will bring me a little further. Okay, I just have to get a few small things done here, and then I'll have a look around the archive. Thank you very much. The things out of the archive about Tunguska... Yes, I'll get going now. But it could take a while until I've sorted through the records. No problem. I'll wait here. I like how they can't animate him just walking out the door so they have to fade the black for that, but... Alright, now we have free run of Max's office, so time to abuse his kindness and steal everything. On the outside, it seems totally normal, but on the inside, it's ice cold. Looks kind of threatening. That red eye on the totem seems to be following me everywhere I go. I don't even believe in magic and all that stuff, but I find it creepy anyway. Let's see what we find here. If I swipe things from Max's office, he certainly won't keep helping me, but I'd like to get rid of this eye. What do we have? We could try to pry it out with the spoke, I suppose. So the spoke has now broken off, but that eye now can no longer look at me in that evil way. I can only hope that Max doesn't notice. No, just, uh... Just destroying historical objects. Oh, no good reason at the moment. A red glass bead. At least, I think it's glass. Plaster of Paris. The text says to add water and vegetable oil and mix to achieve the desired consistency. Throw that in the bowl, probably. The label is illegible, but judging from the skull and the other symbols, it must be extremely corrosive. Hey, maybe we can use that to melt the acid or the, uh, the rock surrounding the amethyst. I'll carefully pour the acid over the stone. The acid is doing its work admirably. The stone is beginning to corrode. I'll have to take it out of the acid at the right moment, otherwise the inclusion will go the same way as the rest of the stone. The light is refracted a thousand times in the amethyst. It's beautiful. No idea why my father didn't remove it from its ugly stone encasement a long time ago. We can also pick up this, which we missed the first time around in here. A photo of Daddy on one of his expeditions, written on the back, is 1958, Vladimir Kalenkov, and... 
I've seen the photo before. But who was the other guy in the photo? And why was the photo torn up? I'll glue it into my diary. It might be important somehow. All right, well, that doesn't help right now. Uh, oh, I should. Born photo, Berlin Museum, a photo of Nina's father during one of his expeditions. Writing on the back of the photo says 1958, Vladimir Kalinkov, and there was originally another expedition participant in the picture, but who and why was the photo? Oh. Okay, so... There are three stones missing out of the diadem. It looks rather unspectacular, but it seems to be important for my father. I should find out why. Well? There's a number on this note. L.A. Originally, the three largest gemstones in the world had been incorporated Emerald, into this diadem. On the left, my father wrote something on the back. The diadem will illuminate the real princess, and she will realize that money is not the greatest treasure. Okay. So... That thing doesn't fit in there properly. It keeps falling out. Dark blue and very cool. Blue. I've laid both lenses over each other. They now have a green shimmer. Okay, so we've, we're kind of making a... I've laid the broken glass over the lens glass, and now the lenses have a strong green tint. We're kind of MacGyvering this uh, diadem. No. Don't mind the history. Can we get water from the theater vent? Oops. Maybe I shouldn't have opened the valve that far. A load of water has come out. I feel like I could make a joke there, but, uh, can we... That thing doesn't... I hope I know what I'm doing. That diadem has now been robbed of any beauty it once had. Okay, so... Great! It fits! Yes, that should hold. Oh. I hope that thing is in the right position. As soon as the putty has dried, I'll only be able to get it off with brute force. My replacement jewels are not really beautiful, but then modeling and handicrafts were never my greatest strengths. Okay. I don't think that I can get closer to illumination by wearing the diadem. So now there's a number on this. Originally, the three. My father wrote something on the back. Illuminate the real the princess, and she realized the money is not the great. Oh. Can't use it. Called us the real princess. I don't think that I can get closer to illumination by wearing the diadem. Okay, so... I think this is where the rock samples undergo the first analysis. Read some of the An award from the Russian Academy. Or for an expedition. A picture of my parents' wedding. He like use cell phone light. There's an my father wrote something on the back. The diadem will illuminate the real princess, and she will realize that my I feel like it's gotta be in there, but... That looks, uh... Here. 
I don't think that I can. Really? Oh, come on. This. I don't think. Ah, that would have been so cool if you had to wear it well here, but. I don't see anything we can put the diadem on either. Like I would expect, well, with the description like that, that there'd be a uh, a bust somewhere of a princess on it. Sure. I don't think that I can get closer to illumination by wearing the diadem. I think you can. My replacement jewels are. <sighs> No, I'm not gonna take this. Your father has to be dead before we'll look for him crap again. <laughs> okay. I don't want to take it along. And besides, I don't have the foggiest idea what I should do with it. Like put it in a lamp or something, or wait, 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 wait. Put it in the uh... come on, go in there. We finally use this. I think th I haven't the faintest clue how this thing. No. And not my bad. All right. Well, I guess we'll brown. There. Not letting us do. I don't think. I don't think. I don't think it's gonna. I think I. Yeah, I was gonna say we shouldn't be able to leave. We got to wait for Max. We probably won't. We'll conveniently be done when when we finish what we're trying to do. Are you the true princess? Gotta be in here somewhere, but oh, hey, right, there is that lamp. Whether I'll get any brighter? Wow, it works. at the plan then. Somebody seems to have marked one of the rooms with invisible ink, and it has just been revealed by the colored light beam. I have no idea where this room 8 is located exactly because there's no map key. Although it seems to be one of the rooms that are being renovated. Wow, not bad. I only go away for a few minutes and you transform the museum into a light show. Oh, I... I'm sorry, but... That's okay. But what is all this stuff and what does it mean? I don't exactly know either. But if this riddle really comes from my father, then he must have had an extremely good reason for the whole effort. Have you found anything out yet? I'm still working on it. And you? What's this roommate? The light beam has changed the color of the skate plan on the wall. A room with the number 8 seems to be highlighted. Is that one of the rooms that is currently being renovated? Yes, and they've been renovating it for ages. The complete substance of this house is, unfortunately, no longer the best, and the workers are having a lot of problems completing the job. Was there anything special in that room? Well, no, not really. All of the exhibits from that room are currently stored in my office. Are you looking for something specific? 
If only I knew. We can go straight to my office. Maybe you'll find something there to help you out. What about Tunguska? Is there anything new on the subject of Tunguska? Not a lot. Here, I found these two articles. Come on into my office and we'll have a look at the exhibits from room 8. Have a look around. All these things are out of the room that's being renovated. Oh. If I remember correctly from the documentation on the Incas that I have seen recently, these kinds of masks were worn during ritual sacrifices. A pygmy warrior's shield from the year 1687 or 1688 in the region of Asia or something like that. As? It looks ancient. Although I saw one like these in some Swedish furniture store only last week, I think this one, however, is ancient. <laughs> Sounds like an Ikea reference there. That could be an antique. Unfortunately, that's about all I can say about it. A vase from the Ming Dynasty. I broke one like this when I was a kid. Oh, I guess this is a... Uh... A rider? I always thought the Aztecs didn't have horses. Stranger and stranger. I think that must be some sort of calendar. But how to read it is what I don't know. That thing has obviously just been set in there. It doesn't belong to the relief disc. Okay, so... Just leave Max alone, because now we can go back to Daddy's office. Now we finally have the coin for this puzzle. All right. The coin seems to complete the set. Oh, let's see. Um, Oops, that opened up a trap door. It appears to be some kind of secret compartment. What could my father need one for? It contains documents. It has to do with my father's research expeditions. It's written here that in 1958, he was the leader of a secret expedition into the Tunguska region. Apparently after the 1958 expedition, someone in the highest position tried to keep the results secret. It has to do with some strange plant growth. Daddy wanted to continue his research, but all further investigations were prohibited. Then apparently he did travel to the region again himself, only in the company of a certain Manuel Perez and a local guide. That was in 1977. If I understand this correctly, a lot went wrong on this expedition. Something awful happened to Perez, and both of them were arrested. My father has not been able to find out what exactly happened to him that night, and Perez disappeared without a trace from that time forward. Daddy writes later that here at the latest, he should have realized that human life is always more important than research. What does he mean? Maybe I should ask Max. He'd be able to help me with all the formulae and explain the scientific expressions. And this is a letter from some society in Ireland. But these are just empty pages? I definitely need help. Maybe Max knows something about it all. Sorry, I still don't have anything. But I... How that is connected with my father's disappearance, I don't yet know. But I have found some of his records in a secret compartment. They describe a secret expedition and some very strange events and... Hey, slow down. I can't follow you that quickly. 
The best thing to do would be to come with me to my father's office. I'll show you the records, and then we should perhaps have a look at his filing cabinet. Okay, let's go. I told you that I didn't want to see you here again. Believe me, it really would have been better if you had kept out of it. Now I have no other choice but to- Oleg Kambersky? Looks like I came just in time. Are you okay? Yes, I think so. What did the detective want from us anyway? Did he want to shoot us? Well, he probably doesn't have his weapon trained on you just for the fun of it. We should get away from here before this guy wakes up. I'm sorry that I was so unfriendly when we first met. For some time now, I've had the feeling that I'm being pursued, and my nerves are shot right now. Of course I know your father. To be precise, I have known him for a very long time, and I know him very well. I was with him on one of his expeditions back then. We were in the Tunguska region back then, together with the Cuban Manuel Perez, an Irish biologist whose name I can't recall at the moment, and some assistants. I don't want to get into details regarding the events of the past, but for some reason, someone appears to be very interested right now. I have the feeling that not only your father, but I as well am in danger, and possibly all members of that past expedition still living. Of course, I can't prove it, but if I'm not mistaken, the Russian Secret Service, FSB, could be behind it. They already tried back then to prevent us, and your father in particular, from undertaking further expeditions. You know about your mother? My mother? Why? What does she have to do with anything? You know that she died in an accident? Yes, but... It is rather questionable whether it really was an accident. You were in the car as well. I was driving behind you when the car suddenly crashed through a bridge railing and plunged into a river. I was barely able to get you out of there. But when I tried to save your mother, two of my fingers were torn off. Therefore... Daddy never told me anything about that. I'm certain he tried not to burden you with that as well. The two of us have already reproached ourselves enough. But enough about the past. Now we have to find your father again. Due to the events of the last few days, I activated a few of my contacts. One of them is Sergei, who is moving in circles which... Well, I'd rather not be found anywhere near them. But he knows just about everything that no one is actually supposed to know. According to his information, a research station was built in the Tunguska region decades ago. And now, another transport is planned to go there. Supposedly, not all the scientists who are to be transported there are participating voluntarily. This research trip and the disappearance of your dad a few days before its start could very well be linked. Does that mean my father was kidnapped and is now sitting on a train to Siberia? What do they want from him? Even if, officially, he hasn't been active in research for years, he is still an expert in his field. I am sure that Sergei could help us. I have to go to Moscow? I have an airplane. We could be there in a few hours. I know this is all quite a lot to swallow at once. But if your dad is really on that train, we have no time to lose. As soon as he reaches the Tunguska region, we'll barely be able to get him out again. The area around the station is too heavily guarded. What do you mean? I don't know. But maybe it is the only chance. So let's go. It would be good if someone stayed behind. In case Vladimir does get in touch after all. But... Nina, we should go if we want another chance to get there before the train leaves. I suppose I could have another look at your father's records, but I don't have a good feeling. Great. Then let's go. Take good care of yourself, okay? I'll do my very best. I wish I could. Yes, me too. Good luck. Oleg didn't tell me you were such a beauty. If I had known that, 
my price would have gone down. Yes, I'm happy to see you too. You can help me in the search for my father? Sergei can do a lot of things. Some say Sergei can do everything. But Sergei is martyr, so let's just stick with Sergei can do almost everything. Yes, yes. Modesty honors you. What can I do for you? I thought you knew that. Sure. But Sergei needs all the information again firsthand. And looking at your mouth and your moving lips. Are you going to help me or just gawk? How does the saying go? One hand washes the other. Okay. So, my father has disappeared. I only wanted to meet him in the museum where he worked. And as I arrived... Yeah, yeah. Sergei knows that. Then what do you want to know? What did your father do in the last few weeks? What was he working on? Who was he working for? Oh, quite honestly, I have no idea. I have never really spoken to my father to any extent about his work. He tends to hold hour-long lectures about scientific things, and after a few minutes, I tend to fall half asleep. Then at some time, we agreed to leave the subject of work out of our conversations. Not good. Really not good. Yes, I know, but it doesn't matter now anyway. But again, I really don't know what it was or for who he has been working for recently. Besides his work for the museum, he still held lectures and prepared reports, but I can't be any more exact than that. All I know is that in the last few days, he seemed a bit unconcentrated, as if he was especially concerned with something. But what that was? That gets us nowhere. A couple of birdies told me in the last few days that another train is leaving for the Tunguska region today. It has to do with some kind of scientific experiments. What kind exactly, I don't know. But it's not important now. In any case, a few old friends have been reactivated. Old friends? Reactivated? Scientists and people who know the area who were in the Tunguska region in the past, they were, well, asked to cooperate. Some came voluntarily. Others had to be persuaded. Ah. Oh. I understand. Good. Be that as it may, your father may be with them. Is he in danger? If he doesn't do anything stupid, he won't have any problems normally. But how are we going to get him out? We aren't going to get him out at all. But as I've already said, Sergei can do almost everything. An old acquaintance is standing at the side entrance of the train station. He'll take you in and give you a pass in a uniform. As soon as you're on board the train, you should be able to find enough time to look around. The guards on board are usually busy drinking and playing cards during the trip. Oh, and by the way, you're traveling under the name Nina Perkova. Your last name could give you away if your father is actually on board. So I get in the train, eliminate all the guards, and free my father. Alone? Great plan. Just great. When you find him, then we'll see how you'll get your father out. Not to worry. Sergei would never leave such a sweet ass hanging. Okay, that's a relief then. I'm sorry. I'm a little bit nervous about my father. I really am happy that you could help me. Thank you. That's okay, little one. They don't call Sergei the good soul of Moscow for nothing. And don't forget. Even if you get information that you don't know what to do with, Sergei can certainly figure it out. Okay, I'll see what I can find out. Nice weather we're having, isn't it? Uh, yeah. It's much too nice to sit around out here. Comrade Yushin is taking your shift now, isn't that nice of him? What? Why? Come with me. Let's chat a bit. It doesn't seem to be my lucky day today. Was that a coincidence, or did they find out that Sergei bribed one of the guards? In any case, I now have a huge problem. Sergei has gone, my cell phone has no signal here, and I have to get onto the train fast. Nina, it's time for a stroke of genius. I need an idea. All right, so, <laughs> surprise cutscene that lasted like 10 minutes, okay. Uh, and now we're not in Berlin anymore, we're in Moscow. 
we have a lot of stuff to do here, but I think that'll be next time. I do want to point out that uh, <laughs> just a couple of things I kind of laughed at during the cutscene is one, Nina has a very shiny jacket. I think it's supposed to be leather, which would make sense since she rides her motorcycle, but it is way too shiny for leather. It looks like it's, um, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it, but it's just not leathery. <laughs> and then um, in the cutscene with the limo, I noticed uh, it was just solid buildings, like Wall Street. I don't know if they have something like that in Russia, but in any case, I guess now we're in Russia. So with that, thank you all for watching and stay tuned for next time and we'll see you then.